Oh, that's it. Welcome back, Mere Mortalites. Back to another edition of the Mere Mortals podcast. Today we got meanderings. We're going to keep it loose, fun, engaging. Is it a, a learning? Mm, is it a learning experience? Maybe. Potentially. But today there's going to be a few topics at hand that I want to bring up. There's some that I've been keeping... I've told you about, but not the reasons. So maybe okay. others will be interested around this. Uh, and we'll see where we delve down with a couple of other topics as well. Good. What do you got awesome. as well? Uh, I have a little something something from mm. from this book here, from Epictetus. Epictetus. How would you say it? Uh, so I looked at this up. I was like Epictetus. Yeah. Uh, I was listening to a guy and he was emphasizing more the E. So it was like Epictetus. Epic. So, but you still pronounce with the... I'm pretty pic. sure that's how it sounds. Epictetus. Ep- Epictetus. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I'm pretty sure it's like that. And then we've also got some boostergrams to shout out that we have Should we do them neglected. now? Should we do them straight away? Hey, uh, let's I do them. I we should do them straight away. Right. Okay. I, feel like, I feel like supporting the people who are giving us boostergrams and... Quick little rundown again, Karen. Can you give people uh, what are Boostergrams? Yes, Because yes. uh, it'll be important. Yep. So this is a, a value for value podcast mm. and Boostergrams are a way of showing your value, that, that you're getting value mm. from us. So we're trying to make this the best podcast possible. I'm really trying to make it as best as possible as I can through new features, through you know my own actions, through the research, through all these mm. different things. And Boostergrams are a way of giving back. So if you go onto a new podcast app, which allows it, so mm-hmm. the current ones you can currently do this on are Fountain FM, Podfriend, Curiocaster. Those are, I think, the three that are the ones where you can actually send a Boostergram. And it's essentially sending mm-hmm. a message directly to us within the app that you're listening to. So yeah. you're, you've also got a Satoshi's attached to this. So it's a small amount of Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. And it's like, hey, I'm going to send this to you. And we see this. I now have the real option ability to really bring these up and so i'll get like a text message so it's almost like directly getting into my face it'll be like a text message going like boom yeah. here's something it's like here's some value for you all the messages boom. that come at current all the mere mortals these are the ones that like we'll actually look at yeah 100 oh, yeah. percent. these are the ones that most I'm, of the comments we'll look uh, at but these are like you'll definitely be looking, I, looking I, at. I won't miss these ones yeah Let, let's put it that cool. way all right so, let's give some let's give some shout outs so there's a, a couple that now we've had boostergrams active for a while now mm. and we have received some but i was on in like the testing phase so i was still you know we were still trying to get the hang of value for value sure, podcasting yep. 2.0 these things so i'll just list these out and then i'll, I'll list a, a couple of caveats as okay. well so number one from kevin bay Glad to return the boost- boostergram. Hopefully, this message gets through. By the sound of your podcast, are you guys on the upside down part of the world? Mm, we are indeed. We are on uh, the upside down I part of the world. I could try and do a handstand to correct <laughs> myself to to be able to speak to you directly, Kevin. But no. Uh, best of luck and go podcasting. So he sent 960 satoshis using Curiocaster. Nice, man. Thank you, Kevin. This was uh, so Kevin has a couple of podcasts. I'll. Throw up something here, which, okay. which shows them because uh, I'm forgetting them off off the top of my head. Another, and this was probably a, about a month ago, so we didn't call this one out initially. Or if we did, it wasn't in this format sure, okay. like now. Dave Jones, this is a test for Kyron. Well, mm. Thank you, Dave. Uh, 20,080 sats. Very Boom. nice, very nice, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Mm. Uh, and that was sent using Podfriend. And then Chad F, who has sent us a couple of things before, not just in the... The, um, the Boostergram world, but also in Twitter and mm-hmm. a couple of things. So he said, Overcast is a real app, but it's iOS only. Yeah, I learned that afterwards. So Ooh, I was, I was claiming that uh, Overcast was um, one of the ones that was only in the US only. Incorrect. That was, iOS only. Okay, that was there you go. Strike and Cash App. Mm. The problem with it is it's iOS only. So I couldn't get it on my Android. Gotcha. Uh, it was my app of choice until Podcasting 2.0 and Podfriend came alone, uh, along. 1,000 sats sent using Podfriend. So Very thank nice. Thank you, Chad. Very nice. Um, now, I know there's probably another one or two that got missed in the sense that I didn't have Satoshi's stream set up, so I couldn't see them. And also, when you had multiple podcasts for a time period, mm. you couldn't get multiple messages in. It was like favoring one podcast gotcha. over the other. So they've fixed that now. Um, you can get a bunch. Now, I haven't read out the seven or eight boostergrams I've sent to our, <laughs> us myself saying things like toasty, testy, test using, et yeah, cetera, yeah. test, et cetera. So, yeah, then I can't when I'm going to shout out ourselves. No, no, the, the, I, I don't the, think that's, okay. that's worthy oh, that's of, of sending out. So, so anyways, but yeah, I think it's just uh, good to put it right at the start as well for me and more lights out there. If you end yeah, up yeah, yeah, sending through a boostergram, it's, we're going to be talking about that, you know, in a lot more. Check out the musings yep. probably for a lot more of the detail uh, that comes out near this. But uh, yeah. That's cool. Very good. Yeah, yeah. No, um, very, like, it's just such a fantastic way of interacting and, and being able to do it easily as mm-hmm. well. So if you're using one of these apps, 
it's, it's all set up in it. there. Yeah. You you do not have to exit out. Go to the at Mere Mortals podcast, uh, you know, handle on Instagram mm. or Twitter or wherever it is. Like, it's in the it's, it's in just, the mo- same yeah, platform, yeah, yeah, yeah so which is cool. It's which very is cool. very cool. Uh, okay, let's let's get something that I've been wanting to share with you, and I've been very maybe cryptic with it. So, okay. our friend Manchel recently, yes, he bought thirty six books, yes, yes, of the same book, yes, and I have gone and bought seventy two books, yes, of the same book. And uh, another friend, Aldridge, yeah. bought a hundred and him and his partner combined bought one hundred and fifty something, <laughs> right, one hundred and fifty something of the same book. Now, yeah. Uh, I want to put it back on you. What are you thinking? Why, why would we have done this? It, is, it is attached to Gary. It is Gary V's yeah, new book. Yeah. Look, uh, Manchel actually explained some of this. Oh, did he? Time, okay, so okay. Ruined it a little bit okay. for you. But, you know, my initial impressions, mm. so before this knowledge, I was thinking uh, it's some sort of either scam, but you, yep. you, you said it was towards Gary V. So I'm, I'm thinking like, okay, there's probably mm. some sort of marketing ploy behind, behind this more, it, yep. than, more than one and Manchil just got scammed out of yep. a bunch of money. Whatever um, it may be. I'm also thinking like they're probably cheap. I'm, I'm guessing they weren't $50 books. Exactly. Um, That's right. So, so you yeah, that would be an AXC. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I'm, I'm guess yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it was attached to you do this thing for me and then there's there's a way of you proving that you bought X many books. The more books you get, the more you get of whatever something. it is. Yeah. yeah. So, in essence, yeah, that's right. So, but, but basically, so the and, and it's an interesting thing. I wanted to bring it up because I was like, how it's a uh, this world of crypto. Now it's been around now for a while, and well, what you I, say that, for a while, but you know, it's for a while, not, in, not in, even a decade, and yeah, only prominently. So it's, in, well, it's just gone over the decade. Yeah. Prominent maybe in the space of tech slash mathematicians back in the day. Now it's starting to be known a little bit more in the, the, you know, the younger the, generation. The world are entering. That's right. This, so, you yeah. know, things are starting to pierce the yeah. veil of, you know, from you, the very initial to he, next level. He, here's a prime example. We went out last night. Mm. Um, was it last night? No, the night before, night before. That. And uh, we were at this Bitcoin meetup thing. There was a random girl sitting on her own. So, I went over and chatted with her. And, you know, she asked what I was doing. I was like, oh, yeah, I was with, with these uh, Bitcoin people. And she didn't say, what what's that? She was like, oh, yeah, okay. uh, do you have... Uh, now, I think she actually pronounced it like uh, et, et, Etrium or et, et, Ethereum. And oh, I was like, nice. oh, you mean Ethereum? It's like, yeah, yeah, that thing. Oh, yeah, I own some of that. Yeah. So she actually owned Bitcoin, Ethereum. Amazing. You know, okay. Tiny so bits. It's and piercing the veil. It's random piercing the random girl in a bar, mm. you know, that, sort that of. you can like talk to. Yeah. But let's go back to the 72 books. So, yeah. yes, the deal was, yeah, so here's Gary's ploy. And I cannot express how much, obviously, the fact that using these NFTs and bringing... Let's just say existing people who follow him, plus maybe new people who don't know because he's playing in that space. And I just go, and we've talk, we've been talking about this on NFTs and other different things, and going, man, you can just generate some giant capital behind this just for if you play your cards right. But basically, the deal was if you within 24 hours, if you buy for every 12 books you buy, you will get a free NFT mm. that he will provide. Now, what that NFT is, nobody knows. People were guesstimating, you know, V friends. Is it going to be something similar? Is it going to be a token? Who knows, right? So in essence, I was okay. How much did a book cost? Twenty two dollars. Okay. So, so there was so a couple of places fair. you could buy it. Some were selling it for twenty six dollars, but in this particular one that there was for Australia, you get it for twenty two dollars. Okay. So I bought seventy two of these. Now, did you have to buy this from a you know selected retailer? Correct. There was a couple of select. So you could buy it from Amazon. You could buy it from Buns and Nobles. A few different places. I decided on one for Australia because it was the cheapest. So I was like, cheapest. It's within the deal. Cool. I bought it. So my expectation is I'm going to get six, whatever NFTs are. And we've talked mm-hmm. about NFTs enough now. If you can go, you can go back and find yeah, we've yeah. been talking about it a lot. So I went okay. I'm going to go in a little bit heavier here than what you originally imagined because obviously the original V friends that I've got. I doing gangbusters. Okay, let's see if we can recreate this. Let's see what happens. He came out and completely said, "Was like, I'm totally expecting like each one of these is going to be worth three hundred dollars at the very least. That's what I'm going to work towards." So, but one thing that I wasn't anticipating, right? So the initial amount of V friends that got created was ten thousand, right? So I, I was kind of doing the maths and I went, "Oh, I wonder how many of these are going to get created because who, who knows how many people are going to be buying this book, right?" There were sixty thousand people watching the stream when he talked about. Hey, I'm doing this deal. It's only going to be 24 hours. And a couple of people are saying, I bought 12 books. I bought 24 books. Some people were like, I bought 108 books. Uh, one crazy dude, I bought 720 books. So I could give them like everyone to my company. Okay. So it's like, what, 14 grand? Yeah, right? roughly yeah. amount of, of books. If you're giving them out to a company, sure, whatever. Uh, he, he hasn't told the final number, but he said roughly that he sold over 800,000 books in that period of 24 hours yeah. globally, which would be... 
round about 70 something thousand nfts and i went oh okay like that's a lot in the space of how many nfts per you know collection i guess the max i've seen is 20 30 thousand oh, that's like huge so these ones are going to be like pushing it so now i'm like doubting it i'm like oh is it going to be worth the value and it feels exactly the same way as you know when i purchased a v friend going oh dang you know oh, i'm not going to put too much in. and then all of a sudden you're like of course retrospectively you wish you went like heavy into it so but so t- stay tuned this is a little part of that story um I'm, so I, we the book comes out on the 11th of november i think off the top of my head but the nfts that come along with that will be shared or talked about on the 1st of november yeah so around that time tune in i'll be talking about whether i got duped or whether uh, i'm smiling smiling once again I, I, i'm almost gonna you know th- this is really conflicting against one of my core values which is waste like i hate waste mm. and there is now 800,000 potentially very shitty books mm, potentially, that are that's right. f- going to flood into mm. the like into I, the market. Why well, would you read this book if you One, I would definitely read this book. Okay. Like for one, I'll definitely What's read it about? Book. Tell me what the book's about first. The of all. he's put together 12 of the key characteristics that he feels are well, got, I think the book's called something like 12 and a half something and it's about 12 characteristics that he believes it's good for business/life. slash life with the personal examples of how he built up uh, VaynerX and VaynerMedia and showing those characteristics of like, this is why it sucked when I wasn't patient. This is what actually was good when I was patient. Um, and then the kick of the book is that there's one called, it's like, it's 12 and a half characters because there's one characteristic which he still says, oh, I'm not that great at and kind of shows the explanation as to well, why isn't that he's not good. For me, I was like, oh, I'd be interested more in the personal story because there's, you barely find any written down about gary so i'd be like oh that's cool i'd read that uh my first thing was as well wastage i don't want to like waste these books so for me it was easy i was like one i'm probably gonna give away to people like i'll probably want to be one of those people where like i'll carry a couple of books in the back of my car like maybe 10 and if i'm talking to someone over me i'll be like look i'll just give you this book but easily for me it's gonna be donation it'll be like donated to schools donated to libraries um that for me is probably gonna be like the main go for a lot of them Especially like, yeah. you know, you go to a local council or a bigger council and you say, yeah, you're going to have 20 books, have them in shelves and whatever. No, cool. Thanks. For that. So, yeah. One, once again, like it's, you know, you're giving out something that could be a very shitty product. Like that's true. That's true. Know, and that almost reflects on you as well. So, you know, mm. who knows? And it's just, there's just me coming at it from the, the point of view of like, well, it's, it's well, a marketing, like it's a marketing place. It, it, it is, it is. But here's the other one. It, um, not see i i don't get concerned with it but it's also like that yeah that association can hurt you even if you're you're so far removed from it so i'm thinking like podcasting 2.0 like say someone who hates dave like he hates and hates how he talks dave's pretty cool Let, use adam there's definitely okay, people okay, out there let's say adam. adam like there is people out there who hate adam like it'll be like i hate the despised person yeah um i reckon by association there would have to be some people out there who'd be like oh you're talking about podcasting about adam not yeah, talking, sure. not, you're associating yourself to him Ooh rather than you know anything else so i think the association you can always have that danger um if his book was like some of his past books where they uh have been and that's why i never purchased some of the older books because there were specific social media ones Mm. and did people do well off them sure but that's not something that i'm super interested in and that i'd be like a bit dodgy about giving away a lot this one sounds like a little bit different one so yeah uh but it didn't it's, it's a good point it didn't float about in my mind enough to have done that yeah so, I, so like, like i think about it like yeah that. It, it, not not so much the the association thing like i i really don't care that much about it because you know if say you're you want to learn from the part like i've read mein Kampf, for example mm. does that make me a nazi you know I've, yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> <laughs> should blow my brains out um but you know that that for example is something that maybe people if they just heard that oh he read mein Kampf like Dirty. that's a bit suspicious exactly dangerous what's he doing over there so there's context not, yeah, definitely context yeah not not so much it's more i guess like the the bulk spamming nature mm. that could come from it you know you've got 72 th- of these things now that's 70 you you know, that's them out? 71 interactions that you're going to have of you know yeah, here's yeah. this thing although um, and and to put it out there folks and this happened as well in the uh, little catch-up that we had on a couple of nights ago uh I, for one, I'd be like, if I had to have 71 interactions, I'd be like, yes, this is a plus. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is a yeah. 100% yeah. plus. Um, so for me, I'm like, yes, I'll, I'll do it for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually wondering, like, could this be a, a strategy that would backfire, like, in the sense of there's going to be a very particular type of person who will get this. Like, it's not going to be an um, organic... Eh, depends what you mean by organic, but 
there's going to be a flooding of this, mm. for example, in a certain sector of people who really enjoy Gary V. But maybe because there's so many, they're going to start giving it to random people who will be receiving this book. Like, like, well, what, what, what the hell is it this? called, by the way? We should. Let me find the exact. Yeah, it doesn't even. People, he bought 72 know. of this thing and he has no idea. Exactly. Who's the author one? <laughs> God. <laughs> No, uh, that's um. It, look, it's an interesting m- marketing strategy. A, a ploy. Uh, it's called twelve and a half. Twelve and a half. 12 okay, and a half, cool. Uh, spelt with uh, numbers or in no, letters. Twelve letters. and a half. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, uh, an an in- an interesting thing. Uh, yeah, I'm. If I see any of these books like rotting in your backseat or like call me out, yeah, 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 yeah and that's the thing. Like they've got to be because like, that then <laughs> be a waste, right? That'd be a waste. Is it a thick book? Do you know? Is it, uh, how many pages? Thicker, do you thicker than this one, I think. It'd okay. be like two hundred odd pages. Yeah, that's alright. So, yeah, um, right. so look, cool. I'll, well, I'm I'll, hoping I'll, it's not going to be a smooth brain, you know, resolution result action, but but we'll see. A what smooth? A brain. smooth brain. Have you heard this uh, terminology? Okay, well I was going to talk. Okay, this transfer to another thing. So smooth brain actions. Okay. So smooth brain is basically I have heard in a couple of. Reddit places and a few so, different. So, so it's where you, thing, so you do something dumb. So you do something dumb. It's like, oh, like that's a very smooth brain thing to do. Like okay. your brain's not as thinking. A, as or opposed like, to a, a hard brain or a rough brain. Or? I think as opposed to, I, I could only imagine that the <laughs> counter example is like you know a normal brain which has its ridges and everything else. It's just a smooth <laughs> brain that has like no idea what's <laughs> oh like going God. on. So I, I don't know. I okay. don't know how that okay. actually directs. I don't know why, I, but I started thinking of like Majin Buu just then or something like that. Like you know anime yeah, characters yeah. where it's just a really round head. And there's, yeah. there's like no capacity for for wrinkles in their in their brain. Some like look maybe like a Homer, Homer Simpson type brain, like yes. just in there. There's no there's, there's no, nothing. Yeah, it's just smooth. It's just a, a so, ball. But yeah, I uh, I did a, a smooth brain action the other day as well. So okay. I wanted to ask you as well, maybe whether it's fitness or otherwise. Have you recently done or taken a smooth brain mm, action? So yeah, mine was, okay. I was benching. I was benching, and to give you an idea, I was doing. It was a set which was. Two sets for eight reps, two sets for six reps, two sets for four reps. And on the bench for two sets for eight, it was supposed to be a uh, hundred and it was supposed to be a hundred and eighteen kilos, hundred and twenty four kilos, and hundred and twenty eight kilos was the sort of the step up. And did the first two sets, fantastic. And then I put a weight onto the next for the next thing. And I did the the set and I was like, oh barely could get the six. I was like, what the hell? That was so so heavy. But I was videoing it as well just to check form and whatnot. And then I checked the video and I realized I actually put an extra ten kilos onto the bench by mistake. Like I On just one yeah. side of it or no no both both sides. So I think yeah. it was, you know, uh where I wanted to go up five kilos. Yeah, I yeah. put five kilos on each side, being yeah, like, Oh yeah, five kilos on each side. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, gee, what the hell? I was like guillotine myself doing this thing. I went, <laughs> Oh man. So then I went back down and finished the whole sets. But do you have you do you do that often? Do you find yourself doing that often when it comes to either the weight uh, in fitness related or something else? Yeah, I wouldn't say often, but you know, more enough times that it's in your mind strong. So here's one from Tuesday. Sorry, Thursday. So mm. a couple of days ago. Go coming out here from my parents' place. Yep. Oh, easy drive. I love driving. Not, but <laughs> you know, go to my car. Everything's set up. Put things in. Uh, like, because I'm transferring, so you know, the, my computer, laptop, random stuff for the week, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And turn on the car, just turns over, doesn't, yep. doesn't, doesn't click on. So I'm like, oh fuck, all right, what do I do here? Um, my dad's usually better at cars, and I was sort of thinking like, okay, there's a battery issue, obviously, because mm. it's, it's not clicking on. Um, what, what should I do? Should I? You know, wait for him and my brother to get home. Then I can use one of their cars, go out and get a new battery. Hmm. Should I call up RACQ, which is the you know automobile helpline place, and they'll send one out and yep. I can buy a new battery. I'll wait for them to come home. So uh, I waited for that. And then I made two bad decisions in a row. Okay. So number one was um, I had the option to test it out. Uh, I Sorry, I in fact did try and test it out. I tried jump starting with this... Um, little kit that my dad bought me a long mm. time ago chinese thing which is supposedly you know you store up this battery and it's got enough volts in it that you can jump start your jump own start car. A car you know cool thing i try it out and it just wasn't clicking over same thing like it would turn on and then no, just, yeah, just okay. wouldn't wouldn't get going and you know so bad decision number one was um i had the option they came home the car was set up ready to jump start it mm. and we could have tested it out but i but went no. 
No, I'll just go buy another battery. You know what? I'll even buy another one because my brother's got a similar card, um, Mazda 6, and his battery's getting old. Fuck it. I'll buy two batteries. Buy two batteries. Go out, do that, come back. And then I was like, I potentially just left the light on. There is a potential that, mm. uh, you know, I, the battery's just drained. It's not completely dead. So I could have jump started uh, the car before I went out and b- bought the batteries. Nah, I'll just go and get them. Just give me it. So I went that, once again, move all the, sh- you know, I'd sort of mm. taken the stuff out of my car back up. And I was like, all right, I'm going to come out, move all the stuff back in, <laughs> put it into my car. Dad comes down, we jump start it, nothing oh. happens. And I'm just like, fuck. So not only have I bought two new batteries just yeah. for, for no reason now, essentially, mm. um, you know, it's good to have a backup, I guess. So it's not <laughs> the end of the world, but I did that. But also just, you know, the moving of stuff in and mm. out of the car just doing that two times like i i, sh- I should have just tested and checked is this gonna actually turn on mm. is this an actual battery issue so things just small things like that um i was listening to a podcast last night where this guy was talking about coding and there's probably one of the reasons i'll never code mm. is i hate computer issues where you do you just don't like you you're, you're trying to use a logic to figure out what the source of the problem is mm. but some of these things are just so, you know, mundane, small, illogical things that it's it, like, it just doesn't occur to you. So this guy was talking about how he'd set up this whole thing, um, set it up properly. And then it was going to like the podcast index. So he was using an API and he was like, I'm seeing it come in, but this isn't happening. Yep. And so he immediately goes into like deep dive mode. <laughs> Got to get down, trawl through these things. He spends like two hours on it. Yeah. And then he eventually figures out the, the only problem was he'd written RSS and capitals instead of in, nice. in lowercase. Okay. And so he just spent two or three hours, you know, solving problems that weren't there. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That's, I hate that. I really, really hate that. Yeah, yeah. it can get really painful in, in IT land when it comes to just little tiny things that you just got to like trawl through the entire code base or you got to trawl through like the entire depth of it, something and then find it's like, oh, yeah, it was just, just something this, random. You're yeah. like, what the hell? How would I even have known yeah, that? Yeah, that, that's, that's the problem. That I think there's more of that you know randomness that ill illogical not yeah, not dude, an easy one of the most of, one of the most annoying know. ones that i i we always account on now right uh it's compatibility issues i don't know if you know what that is but there's compatibility issues Where, between browsers yeah yeah or between or, apps or, or between phones or old phones and dude, yeah so like you'll code you'll code something like say the, the people who are doing the podcast in 2.8 fountain or any of these other ones right you know you'll build something and it'll work totally fantastic where you're building it in whatever browser and whatever application. Yeah. And then you'll pull it out another phone and then just because the way that, that phone is manufactured or how they've done the aspect ratio just breaks your entire thing. And you're like, what the hell? Like nothing, yeah. nothing is wrong with what you've done. It's that you haven't gone and taken into account the 2% that could be using it in this weird way. And now you've got to break basically your entire thing to get it to work for everybody again. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh my God, what the hell? Um, like one of the, Big ones as well is like Internet Explorer. You know, it used to be one that got used a lot, not anymore. It's like very, very low in the population of mm. like at least what we see in federal government agencies and like. Uh, but yeah, trying to code for Internet Explorer, dude, it's a piece of shit. I'm like you just gotta be <laughs> like, nah, fuck it. Like we like we always joke around saying, you know, we we wish we could just put a little message that would come up and be like, look, you're using <laughs> Why, Internet Explorer, yeah. like, get out. Like just don't use this. Like just you shouldn't be using it. That's your resolution. It's broken. Go away. Just you go use Google. Put go like, use Firefox. Put like a time Safari. bomb or something on there. So they try and bring it up in the Internet Explorer and just blows up their laptop yeah. or something. Oh, and dude, we've like we've had in the past, and I won't even name the organization that, that did this, but you know, in the past where they, the organization themselves have been like, oh no, we have to fix this particular issue uh, or bug because you know three people are complaining about it in X Y Z, um, and like the browser is not even supported by the people who created the browser like they're already like we're not supporting this anymore so it's like we're trying to build something for something that's not even supported yeah, yeah, i'm like you're trying to recreate it's it's, it's like Explorer. it's genuinely being like oh you know we want this app to work on a blackberry it's like shut the hell up like no one's using this what are you talking about like no we're not gonna do this but yeah yeah uh, i just wanted to say that podcast i, I remembered it um sorry not not kevin bay's one the the one with the rss feed was Ablecraft. Ablecraft. Um, yeah, by uh, and talking about those are two dudes who are trying to, they're in the process of like creating a music and a band. So they're talking about that, mm. which is kind of cool, the creation process. But also they're starting up this new thing to try and 
distribute essentially use the the value for value for music so instead of putting your album up on spotify sure you put it up as a podcast mm. and people can stream payments to it while listening to it that sort of thing yeah, yeah okay yeah. so there's, uh, there's some cool things out there yeah, yeah. i would because i'm not not sure about the space of um you know how people get paid currently in the spotify oh, model or it anything sounds like that. horrendous man Is it, it? They, they they just essentially earn nothing spotify reams them they yeah, get dang. tiny tiny percentages of, yeah, okay. of uh of for however many people listen to your streams um mm. yeah i i don't know that much about it because i'm not really into the music mm. that much so it's not huge into me but every time i hear people who are in that area of music They're saying like, talking about distribution it sounds like every platform that's out there, SoundCloud, you know, Spotify, those sorts of places. It's just terrible for it. Yeah, they, yeah, they okay. get fucked over. Yeah. I'm going to talk to you Poor about uh, some Stoic philosophy. Okay. We have Mr. Epictetus here. So oh, Stoic philosophy. In particular, I'm going to page 13 of, of this, um, this book, which is On Progress. So it is in book number one. Mm. And he's essentially, he's talking about, how, you know, how you can make progress. What are you doing with your life? What what should you be thinking about? And so, yeah, he's, he's one of, I'll, I'll just read out this section here, which I, I thought would uh, mm. trigger something interesting and it applies to you as well Ooh, a little go. bit. So, make it your goal never to fail in your desires or experience things you would rather avoid. Try never to err in impulse and repulsion. Aim to be perfect also in the practice of attention, withholding judgment. So, saying this is how you make progress, etc. Sure. So... Um, let's see some evidence of it. It's uh, as if I were to say to an athlete, show me your shoulders. And he responded with, have a look at my weights. <laughs> and <laughs> and then uh, Epictetus responding here, get out of here with you. <laughs> get out of here with you and your gigantic weights. I'd say what I want to see isn't the weights, but how you've profited from using them. So mm. a little learnings from you there. There you go. If someone's asking you about your shoulders, don't show you them your weights, your gigantic weights. Mm. You've got to show them your shoulders. You show but them it got shoulders. me thinking, mm. uh, you know, what is something that you have profited from from doing CrossFit? You've been getting into mm. CrossFit recently. What's, yep. uh, what, how have you profited from that rather than metrics of, the, oh, yeah, I yeah, can yeah. lift yep. these weights now? Mm. What about your character, your virtue, progress? Ooh, what are some, what are some good, good, good. I think it's, if, it's made if, me... If uh, you want to think, I can relate nah, something. No, it's easy. Here. Mine's okay. like easy. <laughs> It'd be uh, definitely <laughs> Look more at hum- shoulders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely more humble in the sense of the the movements. That's definitely been one thing. Uh, just because you are in, an, in a different space that you're not going to be automatically absolutely top 1% in. And it's just different movements that I haven't been doing for multiple years. Yeah. So I was like, oh... Amazing, and it humbles you down to be like, okay. Have you got any vids? I'll um, I'll add them to to here if you've probably. got any vids of you doing CrossFit. Probably, probably somewhere. Yeah, but yeah, you know, it, it's uh, it's been humbling. I'd say humbling in the way that I also speak about it too, because a lot of the times I might be talking about numbers, maybe in the sense of like, yeah, showing the weights. I'll be talking about the numbers, I'll be like, oh, you know, I did this deadlift, or I did this for this set, or this for this many hours, or train whatever. Where I can see now my language and the way that I'm talking about it is much more like, yeah. I did these movements or I did this and I felt like it was, you know, whatever, like an RPE type level of it was 8 out of 10 or 7 out of 10. But I'm not focusing on, yeah, these numbers or this time or I was placed in this position and whatever. So there's definitely that aspect to it, for sure. Yeah, nice. Uh, I've What's your uh, example? So one thing for me that jumped out, um, I'm going to show you a video mm-hmm. that uh, I took yesterday. And so have a, have a check out this. What do you think about that handstand? So if one's watching a handstand video, it's yep. on the screen at the moment if you're if you're watching via YouTube. Yep. Anything unusual you see about that handstand? I can see that the hands, the hands are one way or the other. Yep. Yes, yeah. So instead of doing the normal both your hands facing yep. forward, I had one of them turned uh, inverted 180 degrees. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of like, you know, a Kamehameha, but it's split apart yep. a little bit. Now what I was uh, what I've sort of learned actually mm. from from fitness just in general is if you put enough time, energy, and effort into something, you know it will come. It's it's like almost guaranteed that it will come in my mm. mind. So there was a period where um, you know I was I was debating about uh, you know will I ever be able to be good at speaking with girls? Like can I ever get overcome this fear? This this you know I'm not a charismatic individual at all as a as a teenager for sure. Mm. And one thing I learned from fitness was, you know, just as long as you put in effort, time and energy, Mm. you know, you will see results. And if not, you know, 
they can be small results, they can be big results, and you'll learn certain paths are going to go here and there. But it's guaranteed that something will happen and you're going to improve from that. Sure. So that's one of the things that I learned. So this handstand, for example, mm. you know, I have just done a lot of handstanding of the most boring kind up against a wall just for time trying to keep your body as strict as possible you know every time i put my hands in the exact same position every time i try and kick up in this certain way Mm -hmm. and with just enough time energy effort all that sort of stuff i can now do something really cool Mm -hmm. which is like fucked up um brendan and and you know some of the other people there who are good handstanders were like man that's fucking weird how are you doing (laughs) that man um and it was the first time i'd even tried that one um so that was just one thing for me with fitness was like, you know what? You can fix anything. You just got to you gotta have confidence that if you're putting energy, effort, and time into it, you'll, mm. you'll yeah, for sure. get a good yeah. result. I think fitness fitness definitely uh, brings that out. Brings that out for sure. I think mm. you, you'll learn that after a couple of years in fitness. You're like, yep. If you just, you know, you'll, you'll want to think like, oh, man, I can't. No, there's no way I can bench like X amount or whatever. And then you just, yeah. if you stick to it, you'll undoubtedly get that. And, and, unless you yeah. get injured or some yeah. crazy and, shit. And you get there and it's just like... You don't even realize how monumental this would have been for you five years ago. Yeah, exactly. Ago. Five years ago, or something yeah. like that. You, you don't compare it back and go like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Well, there's, sometimes there's sometimes a, there's like a small thing. There's a small, but it goes real quick as well. Oh, it does. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, like just the other day, last week that we went through, I was the, it was the first time I'd ever done a CrossFit session where I was like finished number one. Like, number one. I yeah, was like yeah. the fastest on it, and I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> But look at these shoulders. But yeah, exactly. Look at the shoulders. Look at the weights. <laughs> look at the weights. So, anyways, me and Mortalites, I think we're going to pause it there. Uh, we've been talking for a little while for the meandering session today. If you enjoyed, I'm going to leave you with a small ask of you, me and Mortalites. Share it with a friend. Share it with a friend. Yes, please. Share yeah. the idea of podcasting 2.0. Have you tried so a different There's platform? a couple of ways you can do that. Mm-hmm. There's a share button on almost every single app that mm-hmm. you're on. So, if you see a, a funny thing, share it to your Twitter. Share yep. it to your Instagram. Share it to your WhatsApp. Yep. And share then it, share it. there's the more favored version for us, which is you're in a conversation you're hearing someone talking about their shoulders or their <laughs> weights and you're like, fuck your weights. I want to see the, your shoulders, mate. Exactly. I heard this on the Mere Mortals. That's, yeah. that's how you do yeah, it. And, it's, and, and then you can completely say, like, it didn't come from Epictetus. It came from the Mere Mortals. That's where that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually yeah. from. So. Yeah. <laughs> to quote. <laughs> exactly. All right, Mere Mortals, that's it. One out. Current out. Ooh, ah. Show me shoulders. <laughs>